2015 tour. Uh, before I called it for the uh, uh, attendance, uh, we have a special meeting tonight recognizing Scott's 12 years on the Transportation Committee. I mean, that's, that's a real, real strong commitment. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> and uh, who knows what other things he was involved in besides the Transportation Committee, but I personally would like to thank him for all those years of service. We really appreciate it, Scott. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And um, <coughs> we shall we do the picture taking? Yeah. Let's do the right picture now? taking, and then okay. maybe we can. I know we said later, but um, sure. distribute. Should we distribute the uh, the goodies? So, in, in celebration of your 12 years, <laughs> we got you one fat cupcake for every year. Oh wow! <laughs> whether you choose to share them with the rest of us here, that's completely up to you. Um, Not a problem. Lisa will give you your dozen cupcakes, and then from there. The rest of these guys can beg to be your friend for one night long. <laughs> <laughs> That's how that works. You didn't run that by me, Mark. Right? You're I was I was counting on a cupcake. Oh. So I think what we wanted to do is try to maybe get everybody up front here. Yeah, yeah. I think it would be good to get everybody up front here. Yeah. Bob's just in time. <laughs> Wait, Welcome, Bob. stand for Bob. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Okay, let's everybody go down front and we'll have some pictures. This is where the more civil. Let's go this way, it's easier. Oh. Come on in. We're going to take a group picture. Oh, we are? Okay. Yep. I want to be in back. <laughs> You're a front end, man. I know. You're a front end. Yeah, I'm going to be in the back. <laughs> is this the uh, usual suspects? Yeah. See what? Why don't we do this? Front row. There you go. Lisa, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Anderson? Here. Mr. Batty? Here. Mr. Phil Mesker? Here. Mr. Gary Johnson? Here. Mr. LaSalle? Here. Mr. McEnroe? Here. Mr. Steve Johnson? Here. Mr. Mahoney? Here. Okay, the first item is approval of the minutes of November 17th, 2015. Does anybody have any corrections, changes, additions? Okay, everybody in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. <laughs> item three. New business discussion items the transportation budget presentation. So um, we have two folks from our finance department. That is like that's golden. <laughs> that, that kind of attention from our finance department. Uh, so Maria McElvey, she's our assistant uh, finance director, and Ryan um, Brittenhoff. Brittenhoff. There we go. <laughs> I just drew a blank there, is our financial analyst for the city. And so I know they've been working on something together with Martin, and uh, they're here to present it, but we're 
we're grateful to have you both here. And yeah. Hi. Good evening. Um, we, um, as John mentioned, um, I'm Maria McLean. This is Ryan, and uh, we presented um, the budget this year, uh, both to the budget committee and then to the commission, and it was adopted in June. Um, I guess I'm just gonna. So we're going to um, just do a little bit of a budget overview, just an introduction to um, the revenues, the expenses, and then um, some restrictions. And we're also going to talk a little bit about trends um, that have happened over the last couple of years and then what we're forecasting for the next couple of years in the transportation budget. Also, please feel free to stop me at any time. Sometimes I get excited about my topic and I start talking really, really fast. Um, so if you can't hear me or if you have a, a question, just, you know, stop me. Um, Ryan's also going to talk a little bit about um, certain rules and regulations relating to transportation funds. Um, the overall budget is $10.72 million. Now that is for two years. Um, the city adopts a biennial budget and that budget is from July 1st, 2015 through June 30, 2017. The budget is approximately $5 million each year, um, about 4.8 in the first year, 4.9 in the second year, and then $841,000 is reserved at year end, at the biennium end, um, for future year's expenditures, and uh, it is restricted. Um, there are essentially three different um, pockets of money for transportation. One of them we're not really going to talk about today other than just to mention the transportation SDCs, system development funds are specifically restricted for um, capacity projects. They're collected from new development and they are to be spent on new development. Um, we're going to talk about the other two pockets of money. Um, one of them is transportation operations. That budget for the two years is about 5.17 million and pavement maintenance and that budget is about 5.51 million. Overall, this represents about 6.5% of the citywide budget. Um, the budget includes a focus um, over the next two years on signalization projects and an increase to reconstruction projects and pavement maintenance. Um, in the previous biennium, we had a little bit of funds left over, um, so we decided in instead of saving more money, we decided to use those funds and increase, just for this one biennium, road, roadway reconstruction by $600,000 and pavement maintenance by $250,000. These are basically your, use, your resources or uh, where money comes from for the two years. Intergovernmental revenues are composed of gas taxes. In any budget, intergovernmental revenues will be anything that comes from any branch of government for any purpose. So it could be grants, it could be um, state shared revenues, it could be um, any kind of apportionment. For the transportation budget, it is almost 98% gas tax money. Charges for services are pavement maintenance utility fees. These are charged monthly at, um, to each customer's um, utility bill that goes out every month. and uh, as you can see, that those two sources of funds make up almost the entire budget. Looking at it in a picture, because pictures are sometimes a little bit easier to digest, as you can see, intergovernmental revenues or gas taxes make up about 36% of your revenue source, and charges for services makes up about 41%. The and next, Maria, yes, just a reminder, because mm -hmm. I keep forgetting as you go through this, but that prior slide, that's for. The biennium. This two is years. for the combined two years, yes, as I mentioned okay. before. And, and will Thank most you. of the slides represent the two years? If we're yep. look, Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and it's the thing is that if, you know, going back to these numbers, it's almost exactly half. So if you at any point in time are like, well, you know, what's in year one or year two? Intergovernmental revenue is about $1.89 million in year one and $1.90 in year two. So it's about, it's, they're about almost identical. It's just um, a measly 100000 across the, each year. <laughs> um, charges for services, I think it's like $2.2 .2 million almost exactly for each year. Um, t the other 21% is beginning fund balance, Oregon uh, budget law. 
requires us to budget any kind of funds that we have at the beginning um, available to us. So as you saw on the previous slide, we had the $2.2 .2 million that was carried over from the previous budget, unspent on capital projects, not necessarily, some of them were planned, some of them were not planned. Um, some of the things that happen are, uh, we have our capital projects start in the summer, and our year end is June 30th. So if we have a capital project that starts June 15th, that might not be completed till August. So those funds get carried forward from one year to the next. Um, but you have to re-budget them. You can't just say, oh, you know, that was in last year's budget, I'll just write the check from that pocket. We actually have to re-budget them in the new year. That's according to state law? Mm hmm Okay. According to state law and our charter. Um, according to state law, you have to uh, budget any kind of beginning fund balance that you're going to use, and you have to include it in the budget. According to our code, um, all, all budget items lapse at, at the end, at the conclusion of the budget. So nothing carries forward automatically unless you rebudget it. So they're parallel, so mm -hmm. to speak. <coughs> it's a good question. Thank you. Um, this slide kind of shows you um, year by year, and this is the only one time that I split out each year so you could see the historical information, um, both intergovernmental revenues and uh, charges for services um, over time over the last four years and then the upcoming two years. Um, I will say that intergovernmental revenues or gas taxes um, are the way we forecast them. The um, League of Cities kind of puts out um, some information. Uh, they work with the transportation, uh, with the highway funds, and with the Department of Revenue to kind of for, you know, help us forecast how much we're going to be able to um, budget for the upcoming years. And they give us a formula. Um, the way that the transportation funds are apportioned to the cities is based on a per capita. So they say, okay, you know, this year for the next coming year, we're going to give each city $56 per capita. Um, so we take our estimated population, multiply it by that dollar amount, and that's our forecast. Um, the way we do charges for services is we have a set rate that gets adopted by the city commission, um, and that rate is multiplied by our average number of, um, of users. I go back to the gas test yeah. for a second. Mm -hmm. It has split between the state, counties, and cities, right? And what's the yes. percentage split there? It's, it's not a, a straight percentage, and um, this is basically, and I'll, I can actually I can pass it around if that's okay. tell you what I just gave you. Um, that is basically the information that is provided to each city um, and to anybody else who wants to go look at it, um, done by the Oregon uh, League of Cities. And it explains how this, it, these funds are apportioned. But the way um, the, the state of Oregon collects money, it collects it from motor vehicle registration, title fees, uh, driver license fees, motor vehicle fuel tax, and um, what's the other one? Um, a weight mile tax. They take all of that money and then they say, okay, we've got debt to pay off. So the debt go gets paid first. And that, let's call it, you know, a million. It's a lot more than that, but just for use of rounding. Um, and then they say, okay, and then the planned bridges and planned highway construction needs X amount of dollars, so that has to be done next. Then they have this pot of money, and they divide it um, based on some formulas that are kept very hidden. And then they say, okay, after all of that, the city gets this much money well, on at, a per capita basis. Yeah, look at it here. It says the 50% goes to ODOT, 30% to counties, and 20% to cities, roughly. After paying the debt yeah. and yeah. after paying um, certain planned projects. Yeah. I've, I've heard it, I've heard rumors that it amounts to about half of one percent ends up in each individual city's coffer. I have not done that analysis. Um, that's probably something that we could that would be pretty fascinating for us accounting geeks to look at and <laughs> get back to you. I think it's more than that, though. I mean, based on the pennies of tax per gallon, uh, I think we get a better share than that. It's not a lot, but relatively speaking out of the whole entire pot. I'm not 
I'm not sure the percentages. League of Oregon cities and League of Oregon counties would have that information, that data, would, would they not? Yeah, they, um, as as uh, Mr. Anderson pointed out, they have like the basic formula of, of apportioned funds. Um, but if you even read into the ORS, into the Oregon Revised Statutes, and if you read some of the information on how it's apportioned, you can see all the stuff that comes off the top. Mm -hmm. So if you take it in the aggregate, say, okay, this is the entire pot, how much goes to a city on a per capita basis, I'm not exactly sure. I can tell you that the entire ga gas tax model as a revenue source for transportation is decreasing in terms of overall funding as mm -hmm. the federal government's putting in more and more stringent fuel economy standards and vehicles are becoming much more efficient. They are utilizing less gasoline. <coughs> so the, the pot that the state is actually managing has been decreasing um, for the last few years and the projections are that it will continue to. Not to mention inflation and we haven't increased the tax in 15 years or something like that. Has it been that long since they've yeah, increased the gas tax? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know exactly. the year, but I don't it's know been a year. long time. I think I've heard 17 or something Yeah, like 17 that. sounds like a number. Does this recent uh, Transportation Act by Congress uh, allocate any funds uh, to the states? And, uh, to, to, uh, it's a little early for that. Yeah. Yeah. Is it? But the anticipation is yes. Oh, okay. Right. We're getting beyond... Probably your understanding, <laughs> right, Myra? <laughs> That's for another discussion. Enlighten us on the federal budget. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have enough time tonight. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Ryan. Okay. So, like Murray said, the three main sources we're talking about, um, the money from the state, uh, the transportation utility fees, and the SDCs, and again, we're not touching much on the SDCs, really because the system development charges, those work just like any of the other system development charges, whether it's for water, sewer, storm. It's all dictated by Oregon statute. Um, and we do track those in a separate fund. So we're mainly focused on the, um, the money from the state and the transportation utility fees. The, um, in terms of the restrictions on their use, um, the, the money from the state the state highway trust funds coming from the vehicle fuel tax, vehicle registration, those can be used pretty much on any road-related purpose, including walking, biking, bridge, street, signal, safety improvements. So, and that actually comes from the Oregon statute. And actually the language uh, says the construction, reconstruction, improvement, repair, maintenance, operation, and use of public highways, roads, streets, so it's pretty broad. Um, I'd say probably of, of our three main sources, it's probably the least restrictive. And so, or... Um, now, I just want to throw in a caveat with that. In terms of what the state says you can use the money for, they you know, have a pretty open list of what you can utilize. But in terms of what we budget the funds for and what pot we put the money into internally, you know, that also places additional restrictions on us as to what we can do with those dollars. So if we allocate it, this is going to be used for, you know, sidewalk <coughs> improvements, ADA ramps, or for um, some transportation project. We like to try and keep them in their respective pots because if we don't, what's the entire intent of creating a plan and a budget? So. Yeah, and the next slide actually shows exactly that, what we have planned for those amounts for the next two years. And so we are looking at $3.88 million for the next two years and um, planning on spending it in this manner. So $2.43 million for staffing costs, uh, $620,000 for um, capital projects like turn lanes, safety measures, signalization, um, $332,000 for contracted services, and then $477,000 for operational costs like materials, fuel, and equipment. And as they both touched on, both Martin and um, Ryan, these are um, expenses that, were, that went through the budget process. Um, and because of the fact that the gas taxes are a little less strict than the um, pavement maintenance, these funds, um, or these revenues help fund the staffing um, that the dedicated transportation department staffing. 
um, only. And the projects that get funded every year, again, go through the same process as um, the rest of our capital projects go through. We have a list with some estimated costs, and those get presented to the um, budget committee and then to the um, city commission for approval. A quick question. What percentage of the roads in the city are still <coughs> county responsibility, either by mileage or something like that? What overall percentage? I could not tell you off the top of my head. Um, we do have a list of the county roads that are county responsibility and um, you know each of the various jurisdictions, but I couldn't give you a, a percentage off the top of my head. I missed the question, John. What percentage of the lane miles within the city overall are county uh, responsibility versus city responsibility? Yeah, we know the number, just not off the top of my yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. That leads me to a question. When the county turns a city or a road over, or a road over to the city, does any revenue c come with them? So um, that doesn't happen often. Um, when roads are annexed, for instance, into the city, the city and the county have an old, I want to say it's dated in the 90s, 1990 uh, memorandum of understanding. And in that, it designates what the city's responsibility is and what the county's responsibility is. But we don't actually do a jurisdictional transfer. That has to happen by uh, the city commission and the county commission adoption of, a, of an actual jurisdictional transfer. So Abernathy Road is a good example of that. It's a road that's in the city, um, but it's a county jurisdictional roadway. And our responsibility is through the MOU is for things like um, striping and signage, and their responsibility is for pavement, <coughs> pavement maintenance. <coughs> And that kind of creates some problems for us just because, you know, we might not like the way the pavement maintenance is being handled, yet it's their jurisdictional road. So the citizen doesn't necessarily uh, recognize that that's a county jurisdictional road. It's not like we have signs out there that say, you know, county road responsibility here. So I see some problems with that. In, um, in, the, in the perfect world, we would be able to do a jurisdictional transfer and lean on that memorandum of understanding which says when the, you do a jurisdictional transfer, the county is responsible for paying the city, either completing uh, a two-inch overlay or paying the city the value of that two-inch overlay. And uh, it's fun, I'm glad you asked that question because I just had a conversation with the county engineer today uh, about uh, a street, Salmonberry. If you live out off South End Road or been out by South End Road, you know Salmonberry. It's most of it's county road. And, you know, the property owners along there see our nice roads. They come right up, you know, drive right up to their house on our nice roads. But their road is in pretty poor shape, and they know there's city traffic on it as well as county traffic. Um, but the county in this year, countywide, what he told me was the county has budgeted $100,000, which isn't enough. So I'm just saying that's a small, too small of a number to deal with these jurisdictional transfer roads. So, you know... Salmonberry happens to actually be outside the city, but there are other roads like Abernathy that are inside the city where our preference would be for those to be city roads, but we don't want to just take them without some kind of payment in accordance with the MOU from the county, and the county for ever since I've been here has really underfunded that jurisdictional transfer piece. So we're probably at some point going to uh, have to deal with that in a more... Um, you know, a progressive way, but so far, a lot of the county roads are still under their juris jurisdiction. We did take some a few years ago, but we didn't get a very good deal out of it. <clears throat> Instead of a two-inch overlay, I think we got a chip seal out of it. So, <clears throat> all right. Thanks. Okay, so returning back to the uh, the major sources of funding, uh, I mentioned the system development charges at first. We just looked at the state. Um, the amounts that come from the state. The final big piece is the pavement maintenance utility fee. Um, the, now this one is much more restricted <coughs> than the money that comes from the state. Um, it's to be utilized for the maintenance and repair of streets. This is, um, as you probably know, the pavement maintenance utility fee. It's charged to residences and businesses on the utility bill each month. 
it was um, adopted by the city of Oregon City, I think it was back in 2008. And basically all the restrictions, this is, has nothing to do with the state, these are just restrictions that Oregon City originally adopted, that, um, that the use of that fee could only be used for maintenance and repair of, um, of the transportation system. Is that the transportation system or the streets exactly? The uh, code actually says the um, transportation system. So if you look at um, chapter 13.30.080, it actually says maintaining the city's transportation system. So how does the transportation system defined? We would have to pull up the code. Mm -hmm. which well, I would say this about do. that. When the... Uh, you know that language was included in the code to provide some some flexibility should we need it but if you remember when that was adopted mm -hmm. the community was pretty adamant about that being paid for pavement maintenance only and so we've been uh, successful at maintaining that and the commission has um, um, agreed to stay focused on pavement maintenance the one exception to that is the um, projects that we've been doing over the last three or four years have included repair of the um, ADA ramps, the sidewalk ADA ramps. So the ADA rules require us to actually fix those the minute we choose to fix the pavement. So that's kind of how the nexus between using these funds for something beyond just pavement. But the, the code does give us some latitude there to use those dollars a little bit wider, but that was never the intent when they adopted the fee. And the federal regulations pretty much state once we get past an overlay, so our slurry program um, has did not have to meet the ADA requirements at this point, but our R&R program, our rehab and mm -hmm. um, reconstruction program, almost anything that we do with that, we get kicked into ADA um, compliance. And uh, here we see the current rates. Um, the rates are adjusted for inflation, so each year we look at inflation and then we adjust those amounts um, in July, I believe it is. So there are the current rates for a single family residential, a multifamily, and then for commercial entities. And so we're projecting 4.43 million in funding from the pavement maintenance utility fee, uh, broken out in this way. So. 3.8 million to be spent on roadway reconstruction, uh, 674,000 on contracted maintenance, like slurry seals of the roads, and then 200,000 on materials such as asphalt. So Is this- there a contingency a number in there in, in the event of something catastrophic happening that you know goes unplanned when Right there. <laughs> Read the chart, Mahoney. You guys keep anticipating my next slide. <laughs> so this is basically our budget in a, sna in a um, snapshot. As I mentioned before, um, and this is, again, for the two years. Uh, personnel services is $2.4 million. Um, this is salaries and benefits and taxes for the entire transportation division for the two years. Um, materials and services, as I mentioned before, are contracted services like landscaping, um, asphalt, it could be fuel costs, uh, vehicle maintenance, anything um, that the department needs to operate. Capital outlay um, is the $3.8 million for the roadway and reconstruction project and the $600,000 that I mentioned previously of um, other um, roadway or transportation improvement projects. Um, transfers out our um, transfers from that from transportation to other departments that provide services or to reimbursement for expenses. For example, um, the city's uh, general liability and automobile insurance gets paid by um, one department. This gets transferred to that department to reimburse. Um, IT legal um, also get, comes out of that pocket. The two largest transfers out though, one of them is for fleet um, to reimburse um, the fleet department, the fleet division, um, purchases all the vehicles, and then the departments that need those vehicles reimburse fleet. So that is about, I think I wrote that number down. 290,000. Um, yeah, about, just about, exactly. 
Very good. Two hundred eighty thousand dollars. Um, and then three hundred thousand dollars gets transferred uh, to um, help fund the public works facility improvements. Future. 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 It's our set aside so that we have a nest egg. Quick question: Does that also then include overhead from general services like the city manager, HR, etc.? We don't do an overhead cost allocation program. Okay. Um, the, what we do is um, we take a look at known expenses and then transfer them out. So, um, like I said, fleet. We have a list of you know three hundred thousand dollars of three hundred thousand dollars of vehicles that we know they're going to um, buy. So that goes to the fleet department. Then we do a quarterly allocation based on to, again to fleet based on maintenance. Um, fuel yeah. that gets purchased Accrued by the actual fleet. expenses we transfer over on a quarterly basis yeah and um, it, they have a, a, a program that basically um, lists you know how many vehicles mm -hmm. needed oil and how many needed um, oil filters or what have you and that gets done um, we calculate it weekly or monthly and then we do one quarterly transfer um, then for GIS and IT services we do take a look at their budget and their spending um, and we allocate based on um, on the need of each department. Um, legal fees get anything that's actually spent on legal fees based on the legal um, bills that we get every month. We go through and say, okay, this was for transportation, this was for uh, water, whatever it is, and then we allocate it that way. Um, and then yeah, how do the, you track this stuff? Is it by computer? <coughs> yeah, it is. Abacus. <laughs> Pardon me. I was just making a joke. I said oh. abacus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it, they have a program where you can, like they do for mm -hmm. con inventory control and things like that in, in the private sector. Um, similar to that, um, <laughs> in terms of some of the invoices, is just we literally take the actual invoice and we go down and say, okay, you know, this plus this plus this, and we add it all up, and then we put it on a spreadsheet mm -hmm. to track it easily. Um, some yeah, the, of them, the attorney it, fees are are Those probably are one of the more complicated. Every month we get a bill <laughs> and we have to look at the 15 minutes that where they charge for this topic and figure out which fund it goes to. And um, it's, it's really the finance department. Um, we use, Lisa I think looks at that and then there's several of us that look at that. And if there's questions, yeah, it's just, but it's manually, that, that one's manually. Mm -hmm. Most of the bills aren't quite that. Yeah, what, most of them aren't that bad. And then, for like um, fleet expenses, we track work orders for everything we do, and we give the finance department a quarterly update on. Yeah, that's probably one of our favorites. The easiest one to do. Yeah. What and was then that? Uh, the fleet. So for fleet, we create a work order for every job that we do, and you track expenses against the work order, and then at the end of the quarter, we just tell finance this is expenses associated with fleets. The respective departments make these transfers, and then they transfer the money. Does that include fuel? Fuel, no. Well, Fuel is a direct expense. Yeah, yeah um, but so it's by vehicle. By vehicle. It is by vehicle. Yeah. And, um, and by it department. Does, yeah. right. And that's another invoice that's fun. Yeah. 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 You guys take this stuff serious. <laughs> Jeez. They have to. <laughs> when you get we get audited. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it was the accountants that finally got Capone, which is why I like to tell them. So <laughs> yeah, right. I, we, do take this pretty seriously, and I really tell you, we spend a lot of time on the phone tracking dollars. That's how my wife keeps track of me by receipts. Where you been? What'd you do? Where have you been? Wait, oh, what? You spend money there. <laughs> so, so how much is this little business tonight costing us? Um, we've already been paid. <laughs> we haven't. Let's not. <laughs> Let's not forget, Henry, you made this request. So I know, and I was about to thank her for it. <laughs> Until you see my pillow, right? Um, as you can see there, there is a, a contingency in the line item. It's about $200,000. Um, and when just, it, it's, not, it's not like a pool of money that we've set aside thinking, you know, in case of a disaster, um, oh, this counts as a disaster. I'm just going to write my check out of the contingency line item. Um, Oregon uh, budget law is very, very strict on the use of contingency. And in order for us to be able to use contingency for anything, we have to reconvene um, the commission and, in some instances, the budget committee. Um, it depends on 
you know, how much and, and what percentage. Um, and we have to do a, an actual adopted budget amendment and a resolution to move money from there into the pocket that we're going to um, need the money from mm -hmm. and then um, expend those funds. So we can't just say, oh, it's not like in a contract when you approve a contract and it has like that 5% contingency at the end and then you just like, oh, change order, we're all done. Um, it's, it's a lot stricter than that. My read is the Oregon budget law dictate what percentage of your overall budget should be set aside as contingency? It does not. Um, and there is no, um, no real rule of thumb that I could point to that's something written that says this is how much you should have in contingency or this is how much you should have in reserves. Um, but just from the experience that we've had looking at previous year's budgets um, and working for various other cities and having other clients, um, we have like general guidelines based on what type of fund you have. So if it's, um, if it's a, a, a fund that you know what revenues are going to come in and you're sure within a couple percentage points, that's going to allow you to have a contingency and a reserve much lower than um, something that, you know, like let's say you know you're going to get a grant and that grant's for $400,000 and it's going to reimburse you everything you spend. You don't really need much of a reserve or a contingency because that's all you're going to get. You're going to get the $400,000, $500,000 from that grant and then the fund's going to be done. When you're estimating, particularly when you're estimating for two years, you're going to want a little bit more of a cushion. Um, and especially in a, in a contingency or in a reserve, you know that you can't just spend it, you know, just freely. So you feel comfortable saying, okay, you know what, we're going to need about 2 to 5% in a contingency and about 10% or so in a reserve. Um, if you look at all of the city's funds, on average, we have a reserve of about 10 to 15%, or we would like a reserve of about 10 to 15 percent. Um, the reason for it is because the one of the biggest sources of revenues for the city is tax dollars. And we, our fiscal year starts in July, July 1st. We don't start getting tax dollars till about November. So we need to have enough funds left over at the end of the year to carry us through those beginning months. So that's why we want to make sure in some of our funds that rely heavily on tax dollars, they're going to need a bigger cushion or a bigger reserve. Some of the ones that get money monthly are going to need a smaller reserve. Does that answer your question? Very good, yeah. Thank you. And I think that is, oh, this, just a quick slide of um, basic percentages. As you can see, the biggest portion of our budget is in capital outlay. And do you have any questions? I had a couple quick questions. Sure. Uh, of the re re revenue for the budget for the next biennium, uh, intergovernmental and charges for services, how much of an increase or decrease is it from the 2013-15 budget? Okay. As you could see there, um, it's about a $400,000 increase over the previous biennium. Our um, charges for services went up uh, from 4.11 million to 4.53 million, so about $400,000. Um, the intergov or those are the charges <coughs> for services. I'm sorry. The intergovernmental revenues go up only about 40 to 50 thousand dollars. Very, very itty bitty increase. Um, I think I had a slide. Yeah, this one. Um, this one kind of shows you what our apportionment is from the, from the state for um, highway gas taxes. It went from $57.66 to $57.81 per capita. So that's a very, very small increase. Um, and we traditionally budget about 96% of what they tell us they're going to give us. And we usually come up like right on the money. They like to say, oh, yes, we're going to give you $57.81. And then when it all shakes down, they're actually only giving us like 57.50, um, just because our estimates are a little more rosy than they should be, probably. So we're a little bit more pessimistic. My other question is that the transportation division, I presume, is part of the public works department. Yes. And the transportation division is 6.49 percent of the overall city budget. Mm -hmm. What percent of the public works budget is it? 
Um, well, let's see. Public works budget. I think I had that. I anticipated that question. And then I totally went, whew, forgot about it. I can pull the budget if it then get back to Yeah, I do have, I know that public works is about 41% of the total city budget. If that helps. Um, Transportation by far is the bigger That's budget of, the, of, the, of all the funds. We've got mm -hmm. uh, the so transportation's first, especially if you consider SDCs, um, and so a lot of these percentages are are a little odd because of the SDC funds now. So in our transportation fund, we wrap those uh, um, the gas taxes, the PMUF, and the SDCs all in one fund. So it's by far the biggest and big by I would say a couple of. T uh, 200% or more, it's a pretty big fund. And then uh, sewer, and I think, and then the water, and now the storm. Storm is kind of the low, Storm's low, one. low one. But uh, with the increase for the, uh, this recent increases for the sewer fund, it's, it's become a lot more uh, significant. It used to be our water fund was our one of our better utilities. Now it's kind of starting to get aligned with the stormwater fund, it's just not got revenue there that we need to pay for capital so I would say it's well over 25 percent mm -hmm. without just you know doing a, some numbers off the top of my head of the of the budget okay. um, again probably something we can and my, back to you my last question was you had a two million plus carryover from the current uh, by, by, by NEM and that's for projects that allegedly start in June, for example. Do you have projects planned that are going to start in June that will uh, spend that uh, th those funds? I know this year our pavement maintenance program is, and last year was very robust, so we were planning to spend that down this, this biennium. And I think before that we were saving up some of that funding. And then I, some of that had to do with just uh, combining. We used to have a street fund a P pavement maintenance utility fee fund and then the SDC funds and I'm not sure if that two million is kind of a com combination of all those it's beginning funds. It's not balances. the SDC fund. Um, it is partially a combination for that fund but if you looked at one of the slides I had um, we're only projecting about $800,000 at the end of this biennium to be carried forward into the next biennium. So about 1.8 mm -hmm. of it is planned to be spent. Yeah. And that pretty much is aligned with what our expenditures are planned with the um, pavement maintenance program. So we have 1.3 million in capital construction planned that we're in planning stages and design stages right now. So we'll pay for the design in this fiscal year with the intent of going to construction just before the fiscal year switches. And all that money has to be planned to carry over and then be paid out in the next fiscal year, and that's just the, the construction side of it. Yeah. So we spent about a quarter of a million dollars in design, um, probably a little closer to 300000 for this upcoming summer, and then we're planning $1.3 in construction, and then there's a little money that we plan in, th in that that's contingency in the event that the bids come in higher than our projected engineering estimate. So we won't carry that healthy of a contingency as in the, in the years upcoming. Yep. Is that design uh, in-house or is it consultant? We don't have the resources to do that in-house. It's all consultant. We manage it, but um, it's all designed and uh, inspected um, through uh, contractual means. Quick question. Do you expect with oil prices being depressed that the cost of asphalt is going to go down? And you're considering that when you you see some of that projections? sometimes but it's never quite what yeah. the <laughs> oil prices are yeah. like you know um, you know I think a lot of the, the the cost for production of asphalt isn't you know the oil is a is a reasonable size component of that but it's all about the labor and um, so I, I you know when oil prices go down we usually see asphalt prices stay pretty stable instead of typically continuing to increase but that's yeah. because they know it's going to be needed mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it really is supply and demand. I mean, we see that on our bid pricing pretty regularly. When we were in the downturn of the economy, man, oil prices, I don't know, you know, oil prices during the downturn were kind of, you know, all over the place. But, um, you know, our asphalt prices were definitely dropping just because they wanted to get the work. Any other questions? Well, I would like to thank you for this. This is a better review than I ever got when I was working here and doing some of this <laughs> for the city. Well, thank you. <laughs> Our pleasure. Um, and Henry used to be a public works staff member <coughs> before any of us arrived. <coughs> Wonderful. <coughs> yeah, I thank you too because I know you three of you worked on this, and uh, it was a. I, 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 this was the first time I saw it as well. So our finance department is is top notch, and um, this is more of the analysis and budget side of things. We also have a utility billing side, which often take the brunt of the hate and discontent with regard to our payment maintenance utility fee. So they they do a good job with that as well. And um, yeah, and then we did this year. We also went through a five year audit. Ryan helped us a lot with making sure in our um, adoption of the pavement maintenance utility fee there was a provision that said every five years you're going to look at you know collection how much you're you know collecting are you collecting the right amount we had quite a bit of energy that um, went into that and uh, martin and um, we had a seasonal and ryan they all kind of worked through mostly not so much for the residences but on the commercial side the comp the calculation fairly um, complicated complex yep. and uh, so these are great folks to have and and uh, while they're in a different department we're just across the hall so we actually communicate once in a while <laughs> <laughs> well thank you very much thank, thank you, you very great much. presentation thank you Myra thank you right the next item I'd like to continue the discussion on the next item since we're running kind of behind here yeah so uh, well, is that the, the is letter, that from, the letter from the Clark resident of Clackamas River Drive speeding? So I, I had gotten this letter from one of the residents of Clackamas River Drive, and I expressed to them that the process is come and speak to you guys or submit something for the record, and then I'll begin working with ODOT to start doing a speed analysis for the corridor, we're trying to see what we can do to, to if we can do anything for this. Oh, so you're planning on us? I was just study. putting it for the record, and then I'm going to start working it on my end. I just okay. wanted something before you guys, so there really isn't anything that needs to be done but it's it's in the record for you if you'd like to take a look at it okay thank you um at this point in time unless somebody else has something to speak of i'm going to adjourn the meeting